Hello everybody, GM Jesse Cry here, and today I wanted to stop in to do a quick review of Svetozar Gligorich's I Play Against Pieces. And the first thing I have to say is that I got the book really on a misunderstanding, which is a little bit humorous that I just want to share with you. I thought that the book was going to be about a prophylactic sense of playing against your opponent's pieces. And I thought that was a great philosophy, credo, for chess players. However, that is not what the book is about. The book is about the idea that you are not playing against your opponent, but you are playing against your opponent's pieces. And uh, that is the first of many things that Gligorich had in common with Fisher. Wh whether or not it's true, they at least espouse that idea in public. I think to a certain extent we all play against our opponents, even if we don't claim that we are. Um, Gligorich is a fascinating guy, uh, even outside the chessboard. Like Sarah Juan, he's the exception to what most, the, he's an exception to the introversion of most chess players. An extrovert who was writing about chess all the time, a chess popularizer, and also someone who got into chess politics. Um, the book is, of course, a kind of best games collection, and one of the interesting things about the book is just the way it's laid out and that is it's done by openings it's not done by years as in a lot of uh, game collections right um, and I think it's very telling as to how Gligorich approached the game it's so you instead of by years you do openings and um, studying the book I came to get a sense of who the guy was as a chess player, and that's one of the main things I'd like out of a book like this, and that is that he was a very principled player, and this is something uh, in terms of opening play that you don't really get anymore, and so it's kind of interesting to recapture this historical nature of his play. And so what I mean by that is back in the day, before the computer, right, you had a sense of what the best moves were and people believed firmly whether it was d4 or e4. And he had developed a sense of what those best moves had to be and played them again and again for the most part. And so there's this interesting sense uh, of where I think, at least for myself and a lot of other chess players, we sit down and we say, well, I'm going to play a game of chess. And I think for Gligorich it was more like, well... I'm playing now a game of Nimzo Indian, or I'm playing a game of King's Indian. And so it's a different way of thinking about the game as being framed by the opening that it comes from. And that's why the chapters are as they are. Um, and also, like Fisher, someone who developed a deep sense of what uh, the openings and the the evolution of each opening was. And so I think one of the great things that I got from the book, and I can recommend uh, this feature of the book in addition to the book itself, is especially the chapters on the Nimzo Indian and the King's Indian, what you're really getting is an evolution of an opening through this guy who played it very well. And um, what's nice about it is you can get a real human feel for the way he played those positions and the, he developed a deep understanding of those positions. Um, and I just want to mention for chess history that, you know, the modern way of playing the King's Indian is now called the Mar del Plata variation. Really, you could call it the Gligorich variation. He was the guy who brought it about. So a very nice book. I recommend it. And I'll leave it there. Bye-bye.